Today on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan goes on a search for the world's largest grouper. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. Goliath groupers, they're among the largest reef fish in the world. They used to be common throughout the Caribbean, but then their numbers started to plummet in the 1980s. That's because everybody wants to catch an 800 pound fish. So pretty soon the Goliath grouper had been fished almost to extinction. In 1990, the US government had to take drastic measures to protect these fish, so they passed a law that banned all fishing of Goliath groupers. Now, 19 years later, they're making a remarkable comeback. The Goliath grouper is still very rare. In fact, most divers have never even seen one. David Dubelay, the world-famous National Geographic magazine photographer, has invited me to join him and his wife, Jen Hayes, who's also his photo assistant, on a Goliath grouper filming expedition. How could I turn down an invitation like that? So I head down to beautiful West Palm Beach, Florida in September on a mission to see one of these magnificent fish in person. We board the Shearwater, a large dive boat that will be our base of operations for a week. I'm really excited as we pull away from the dock. Captain Jim Abernathy is taking us to a shipwreck where the groupers are known to hide. It's not far from the sprawling coastline of West Palm Beach. Since it's only a 10 minute ride to the first shipwreck where we'll be looking for Goliath groupers, I get right to work putting my gear together. We're gonna go find some Goliath groupers. Maybe they'll be bigger than me, which isn't really that hard, actually. We've arrived at the wreck of the Mitzpah, which sits on the seafloor 80 feet below. The question is, are there any Goliath groupers down there? Well, let's go find out. After I get in, David and Jen follow with their still cameras. My cameraman Pierre and I start descending to the wreck. Once we hit the bottom, Pierre and I will stay out of David and Jen's way. We're greeted by a very strong current. I can barely hold my place in the sand. We struggle to make our way to the wreck where the Goliath groupers like to hang out. Shipwrecks are magnets for fish. That's because they provide a great place for fish to hide and rest on what might otherwise be a very flat, featureless seafloor. The shipwrecks off the east coast of Florida have become some of the best places to find Goliath groupers, but a typical shipwreck only has one or two of them hanging around. Things are different here in September. That's when the Goliath groupers get together in large numbers to spawn. We're thrilled to find some big Goliath groupers. David is getting up close and personal with some big fish. And it looks like he's getting some good pictures too. The groupers don't like the current much either, so they hide behind the wreck the same way one might hide behind a large object to get out of the wind. An even better place to hide is inside the wreck. I make my way over to a doorway to have a peek into the dark interior. I can see a couple Goliath groupers in there. I swim inside to see if I can get some closer shots. They tolerate my presence until I get a little too close. Then they swim away, spooked by a diver in such close quarters with them. But outside, they let me get really close. 
These groupers are surrounded by little silvery fish called cigar minnows. The minnows might look like they're hiding out of the current, but they're really aggregating close to the groupers. What could they be up to? The goliath groupers look like they're just hanging out, but they're waiting for something just like the cigar minnows. Later, when the current relaxes, dozens of groupers are gathering together in the water column above the wreck. What's going on? It's the mating season, and these fish are preparing to spawn, probably at dusk or after sunset. Unfortunately, I'm low on air and I need to head back to the surface. Pierre and I do a safety stop on the anchor line as we eagerly anticipate the next dive. That is incredible! Those fish are so huge! They're like the size of refrigerators! Unbelievable! As the massive fish gather into groups for their evening spawning, I'm up above getting ready. I hope I don't miss anything. These fish only spawn once a year, in September, during the full moon, at dusk. And they only do it for maybe one or two nights. We know they spawned last night, so this might be my last chance to film this. So as the sun gets low in the sky, Pierre and I jump back into the water. We head back down to the wreck. The Goliath groupers are all around the wreck in abundance. These groupers are so large that they don't need to worry about too many predators. With almost no current now, they head away from the protection of the wreck into open water. Clouds of cigar minnows stick to the groupers like glue, eagerly anticipating millions of delicious eggs that the groupers will release when they spawn. The medium-sized fish, called jacks, make runs at the cigar minnows to see if they can catch a meal. David is caught up in the action, photographing the cigar minnows surrounding the groupers. I keep looking for any kind of mating activity, but something totally unexpected catches my eye. It's a manta ray swimming among the groupers! I move in for a shot of the ray. It doesn't seem afraid of me. I have to believe it's no coincidence that a manta has shown up here. Mantas are filter feeders and this one is probably hoping to join the cigar minnows and feed on some grouper eggs. The manta seems intrigued by our video lights and she keeps coming over to me. So I put my camera down and give her a little belly rub. And then the manta swings around and says hi to Pierre. What a thrill for both of us! Any dive with a manta ray and fish the size of refrigerators is definitely a good day at the office. Mantas are awesome, but I need to keep my attention and my camera focused on the big groupers so I don't miss anything. The cigar minnows are crowding in even tighter to the groupers. You can hardly even tell there's a big fish in the middle of all that. It's an amazing spectacle to observe. These enormous fish would make Michael Jordan feel small, and the cigar minnows are just magical to watch. We see a lot of what looks like courting, but no spawning. Maybe the groupers are more bothered by our presence than they let on, or maybe they're just waiting until dark. But as it gets later and later, we're running out of light and air. Reluctantly, Pierre and I must head back to the surface. It looks like the spawning will happen later in the evening, and I'll miss it.
back aboard the boat, David and Jen are looking at their shots. See that? That is really nice. Even though we didn't see the actual spawning, the dive was still well worth the effort. That was an incredible experience. Those fish are just majestic, covered with all those beautiful fish. We didn't actually see the spawning event. I'm not sure if uh, they're maybe doing it now, but we finally had to come up. We ran out of time and it was really dark, but unbelievable. That was something I will never forget. The Goliath grouper is a spectacular example of successful marine conservation. This vulnerable fish was pushed to the very brink of extinction, but was saved at the last minute by laws to protect them. In less than 20 years, they've made a strong comeback. And although their population has not yet fully recovered, they're well on their way.